and I'll have to do this later, but he, he made you the replacement for Satan. No, I don't think so. You have probably heard it said that Satan, many of you heard this before, that Satan is or was the worship leader in heaven. He was the choir director, that that was his gift, music, worshiping, singing, praising. And that since he was kicked out of heaven, there needed to be a replacement for him. And so that's what we do. Have you heard something like that? So something that Mike Todd said, didn't really want to cover Mike Todd, but someone sent this to me and I wanted to cover it because a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people think this, people who are well-meaning, well-intentioned and want to study the scriptures, think that Satan's role in heaven was as a worship leader. And then now heaven is now looking for worshipers. Like I want you to understand that he blew into dirt. And I'll have to do this later, but he, he made you the replacement for Satan. Only, only one archangel got kicked out and was never replaced. And it was the one who was over worship. I'm going to have to do that next week. All I'm saying is God made you the replacement. So every time you worship, you remind the enemy of the spot he can never get back to. <laughs> you remind him that he lost his place in heaven. The reason he's been coming after you so hard and trying to steal your worship is because every time you lift your hands, despite how bad you feel, and every time you say hallelujah, even when they hate on you, and every time you say, God, you're faithful, even when you don't have finances, you're punching the enemy in the face. I get what he's saying because one, it, it just gets people to cheer and to clap. And so he wants to steal your praise. He wants to steal your worship. No, he wants to steal your life. He wants to steal your soul. He wants not to steal your worship. He wants your worship to change. He wants the object, the focus of your worship to shift from God to him. It's just what he said to Jesus, bow down and worship me and I'll give you all these things. So the issue, though, is was he the in charge of worship, kicked out the archangel that was kicked out of heaven, never been replaced? Clever way of putting this, but is that true? Are we his replacements? Now, let's just start with that point there. That's a silly statement to make that we are his replacements. No, we are not his replacements. Remember what angels are, including including uh, fallen angels, demons, Satan as well. In Hebrews 1, 14 speaks of angels. Now, speaking of angels now, but remember, they were all created in the same fashion. He says, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So the angels that we have now, they are ministering spirits for us. And they were intended to be that way. It's just that there was one third of them that left that abode that forgot their place. We are created lower than angels, low, including demons. They are more powerful beings than we are. So we're not replacing them. They're not, they're, they're not interchangeable parts. So we are who we are. We are created. And does God want us to worship him? Sure. But to say that we are replacing Satan, that goes a bit too far. What it presupposes is that there is no worship in heaven. And so heaven has been without its worship leader. Well, let's look and see. First of all, let's go to a couple of things. Let's go one to Ezekiel 28, 13. There's a passage here that makes folks think that this is what Satan was. It says, you were in the garden. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, not sure if I'm saying that correctly, the turquoise, and the emerald, and the gold, the workmanship of your settings and sockets was, was in you on the day that you were created. Uh, the day that you were prepared. They were prepared. You were an anointed cherub who covers, and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. You were blameless in all your ways uh, from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. Now, the question is, where do we get this idea that he was a singer? Well, we're going to have to pull up a different translation. This was the NASB. Now we're going to have to pull up the King James Version. At the end of 13, you'll see this statement. You'll see in, in the King James Version, it says, uh, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was ordained in thee. Well, pipes is kind of like a modern vernacular to signify our throat, our someone that flex the golden pipes, so to speak. 
that's a mod, that's just a vernacular way of saying that's just kind of a, a slang way of, of talking about someone's singing ability but that's not what it's talking about here and so we think that or we might say again and, and guess what it may very well refer to his his throat to him being able to speak it may even refer to him being able to sing i don't know if that's necessarily the point i think he's just simply stating who and how he was created and he was made in such a way that he didn't need to leave his abode but he did so point of fact the bible does not say that he was well endowed when it came to music could he sing i have no idea maybe he could i mean he's a he's a spirit being and so possibly he could there's no way to know maybe he is that great at music maybe he is that great at all these other things but to come back and say that he was the minister of worship well if he's not there to worship what are the other angels doing is there no one there to worship and to sing praise to god in heaven well no that's not true either remember we have let's go to isaiah 6 3 let's let's start in 6 2 no let's start in 6 1 in the year of king isaiah uh king Uzziah's death i saw the lord sitting on the throne lofty and exalted and the train of his robe filled the temple the seraphim stood above him each having six wings with two he covered his face with two he covered his feet and with two he flew and one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And so this worshiping before the Lord is still there, was there, is there, and will always be there. Worship in heaven, worshiping of God is not, nor was it ever dependent upon any one created being. Don't think that, that, that God's plans have fallen apart because one demon and or some other demons have decided to leave their place. As a matter of fact, if we go to Revelation chapter five, look at verse eight. It says that uh, when he had taken the book of the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one holding a harp of golden bowls full of incense, which are the, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the book and to break its seal for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people of nation and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom and a priest to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. So they're singing a song. There's worship going on in heaven, just like there's worship going, that there has been worship in heaven. And so none of these things have stopped. The heavens sing praise to him. Nature sings praises to him. We today still sing praise to him. And so no It'd be wrong. It'd be a little bit. It'd be a little bit of hyperbolic to say it really actually not just hyperbolic, just wrong to say that we are Satan's replacements. We are not replacing him in any way, shape, form or fashion. He was not uh, the angel in charge of worship and we're not here to replace his worship. Our worship, by the way, is a lot different than what the angels are. Our worship will be those of those who are redeemed who were on their way to hell, who have now been purchased of those who have been forgiven a lot and now love a lot. That's what our worship is. And now, is it a correct statement to say that Satan hates our worship of God? Well, sure. Just like everything else in the world hates our worship of God. But we don't worship God because it bothers Satan. We don't worship God to get anything. We worship God because he is God. Mm -hmm.